So hello, good afternoon and welcome along. Out with RB and Eclipse Motorcycles and an overview and test ride of this, the Lexmoto LSZ. Now not many people have been out on one of these. There are a couple of videos of people riding them, but this is the full overview. So let's start at the front. Check this out. Upside down forks. Finally, a bike with upside down forks apart from the LXRSE. Dual disc brakes front and rear six speed box 13 litre tank on this as well but everything is LED so slim profile LED indicators on these dirty great big projector style headlight to the front loads and loads of light off of this one emblazoned with a Lexmoto badge and if you're wondering what this Chinese logo is it's actually naked so for everybody that's been questioning what does that mean it's naked Carbon effect swing arms, so you've got covers over the swing arms. Low hugger on this, so very, very low, sets it low, indicators are down here, and your stoplight situated just up here. So a nice high level stoplight, and you've got that hugger at the back that's going to get rid of all the dirt. And the one thing I didn't like about some of the sports bikes, the key entry was down the back underneath. LXR and LXS both have the key entry at the back, covered in crud. Unless you keep it lubricated, you're not going to get your key in there. This is on the side for the seat on this one. And then just looking down the left-hand side of the bike, near side. But what a glorious bike this is. And you've got the carbon effect to the top of the tank as well. Now, 13 litres on this one. Plenty of mileage out of this bike. Decent sized seat, and your pillion has even got a nice little seat there as well. So there is plenty of room. And once again, you've got a decent set of grab handles. One thing that did get me when getting on the bike is this display, full colour, and it doesn't sound too bad at all. Mirrors are pretty darn good, not the best in the world, I'm not going to pull any punches on this one. I've got about, I'd say about an eighth of my shoulder, even with the mirror set exactly out to see the traffic. I prefer a bigger mirror on these, but... As I always say, I don't use mirrors, so I prefer to shoulder check and move my head everywhere when riding. Fuel gauge situated off to the left. Your total mileage here. Gear indicator is down here for your gears. Nice big speedo in the centre and your revs are along the bottom on this one. Standard controls over on the left. Pass light and that comes up here on your telltales. Indicators pop up at the top left and top right for your indicators. So you've got hazard light indicators horn it's adequate and <laughs> your kill button and your start button and one thing i do like obviously the lxr lxs very very hard to see your coolant levels or top the tank up this one is situated right down here just at the front of the tank and the other thing is in the center you have a usb port with a clip over cover to keep the water out so sat nav mobile phone put your phone holder on your handlebars or up on your mirror and drag your lead up to it so you're not going to have cables flapping around all over the place on this one but as always let's get out and have a ride so very easy to get into gears the gearbox on this is super super smooth so we're just going to pull it away a little bit of back brake just to hold the bike in place and just see what it's like at low speed handling so three to four mile an hour but it's very controllable just on the back brake just using your back brake to damp just to control your low speed right let's get out and let's get into some traffic now we're running two cameras today so we've got the drift on the side and the gopro on the front of the helmet so we'll try and get you two different views of the bike while we're riding but pulling through the box very easy to get through all the gears and changing down absolutely perfect so it's a super smooth gearbox on this and the clutch bite is about a third of the way out now we're going to let the traffic clear and we're going to do a slow run and then we're going to open it up and do a full run just to see how quick it gets up to 45 mile an hour so we're away pull through the box as quick as we can two three and we're taking it nice and easy. 
but at the end of the day it's a 125 so it's not going to be super fast acceleration the technical specification does say that it will do around about 65 to 70 mile an hour once run in so we are 1.9 miles in on a brand new engine and as always take your time run the engine in 40 with a 45 mile an hour maximum in little bursts so we're going to do a slightly different route today because the customer has already bought this one so we're going to do a slightly different route we're going to take in some back roads rather than that long dual carriageway that I normally ride and just see what it's like uh, riding and around town braking on its super efficient dual braking system as always on one of these let's get some revs on through the box as quick as you can and straight up to 40 mile an hour but obviously once you've run it in you can get the revs up a little bit higher we're pushing it to about 6000 rpm and it's very easy to look down at that display and see exactly how fast you're going so nice easy visual display which makes it easier if you've got your sat nav up on the dash to concentrate on your sat nav and concentrate on the traffic but road holding wise it is lovely now the one thing I did find, now obviously I am 5'10", 32 inside leg, so I am a long-legged rider compared to most at a 28 and 30 inside leg, can reach the floor absolutely fine, but seated on the pegs, my feet are slightly back, I would say they're about 6 inches back from centre, but the annoying thing is that pillion seat at the back, I can feel it right in the crux of my coccyx and it's bumping against me I can't get any further back on the seat which is an absolute pain in the backside but obviously if you're a shorter rider you're going to be using a little bit less seat than me so we're just going to have a little slightly different run around town and they have changed all the roads in Milton Keynes again new roundabout has been installed at the Open University this wasn't here last week it is now but going through the corners on fresh rubber but it does find a very good line going through the corners overall is it a comfortable bike yes it's comfortable apart from that pillion bit at the back As I say, if you're a shorter rider, you may find it less of a burden than I do. As I say, I don't pull any punches when I ride. As for the handlebar position, it is very, very comfortable. Mirrors are adequate. They do the job. I can see in those mirrors and see what is behind me. But it's nothing better than doing a uh, quick blind spot or shoulder check and obviously picking up that blue car, now I've just picked that up and I can just about see it in the mirrors my shoulder's blocking it out at the moment and you can tell the sunny weather is here because all the tourists are out and they're all down the local park either that or visiting church what's it like over the speed bumps? with upside down forks, suspension, lovely and crisp, just what you would expect from a Lex Moto. Obviously checking the corner before we go into it. Now on a hill climb, let's just put it up a hill. And obviously remembering it is a 30 a mile an hour down here nice big speed bump absolutely lovely so fifth gear pottering along 30 mile an hour at uh, 5000 rpm it's a glorious little bike to ride so while we're uh, puddling down the country roads 
and my favourite little tunnel known as Simpson Tunnel, what's it like? Probably won't be able to hear it yeah, not much of a, a rev bomb from that but <laughs> it's not the loudest bike in the world it's a 125 at the end of the day nothing that a, a Lextech can wouldn't solve but it has got that uh, fad of an exhaust that comes out underneath a bit like the uh, MT or very similar to your Hondas but for pottering around town or just the sheer fun of being out on a naked bike all well and good so let's give it the scores my reach score as I call it so half of rideability what's it like I'm gonna give it 9 out of 10 it's it rides all right it's not a bad little bike but I'm gonna give it 9 until further ride testing <coughs> economy E for economy now they reckon this will do pretty darn good mileage to the gallon so you're probably looking about the hundreds again most 125s are around about the hundreds to the gallon scooters a little bit more obviously being automatic affordability can't fault that at all I'm going to give it the full 10 out of 10 so reach so far rideability 9 economy yeah we'll give it a we'll give it a 9 affordability though full on 10 this bike compared to the uh, LSN and the LXRs is a hell of a lot cheaper and for a water cooled engine it's not bad comfort sorry boys it's going to be a 7 from me because that pillion seat is now getting on my <laughs> it is really getting on my nerves now all I can feel is that pillion seat pad, pad bashing me in the uh, posterior and even if I was to sit forward on the tank and I'm not saying that I've got a, a big posterior but it is it's really annoying I can't seem to get comfortable on this bike obviously because I am a bigger rider but obviously a smaller rider may get on with it that is the only thing that I don't like so seven for that sorry guys as I say I don't pull any punches on the comfort handling wise it's great 10 out of 10 for the handling it's not a bad bike and for the money you ain't going to get much in the price range on a naked bike at the moment come on then van driver who's going first thank you van driver actually had right of way there <coughs> excuse me so tighten it all up out of 50 it scores a 45 but time will tell it may improve I'm going to give it 45 out of 50 for that we're going to put the tech spec up on the screen so uh, while I'm riding you can have a look for all the technical specifications of this bike as for the seat height it doesn't actually tell you in the technical data how high the seat is but it feels around the same height as the LXR which is 820 so I'm going to say it's somewhere in the 800s it's not a low slung bike I can flat foot pretty darn good on this and he did want to go there but obviously he didn't want to indicate again watching the junctions but the braking on this especially on that front is super super efficient just what you want from a bike decent brakes So, that's your Lexmoto LSZ, it's available from Eclipse Motorcycles, and the numbers again, if you haven't watched the walk round video, uh, main garage number 01908 643 603, bike sales 822458, so it's 01908 822458.
keep your eye out because obviously this is a customer's bike further ride tests to come on this we take it out and give it a few more runs just to see what it's like but as with any bike that we sell we always put about 10 miles on the bike full road test and as I say on my reviews I don't pull any punches so apart from that pillion seat which uh, keep my eye on him which I can't see being a major problem if you're a shorter rider if you're a bit longer in the leg and you want to sit back a bit further well I suppose I could no I was thinking of sitting on the pillion seat but no that doesn't work for me either but not a bad bike for the money and we're going to put the retail price up for you on the screen and of course check out all the technical spec if you enjoyed the video as always give it a thumbs up like subscribe and all that don't forget to follow all the other bikers on my list as well but for myself and the team at Eclipse Motorcycles be well ride safe and from RB it's a big goodbye from me